Welcome back to Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today I'm going to be continuing my conversation with John Walmsley. Please welcome back John Walmsley. Do you have favorite episodes either that to watch or to have been a part of? Well, to, to be honest, I haven't I haven't watched for a long time. I generally when someone asks that, I, I think of the the gift, the episode that Ron Howard mm. did. I, I very much um, enjoyed working with him, and I think that turned out well. Yeah, uh, that's the one where he his character has leukemia and he's going to pass away, and he gives me a recorder. Um, the one with uh, Merle Haggard, which was actually kind of a sequel to that episode, um, where he he would have been Ron Howard's dad um, had they been in the same episode together. Uh, that was a lot of fun to do. And, do you know, uh, was, um, have any or heard anything on, because it was a recast that the original actor who played right. his father in The Gift was not the actor. Then they brought Merle Haggard in. Um, now, the first actor, I don't think he did any music in it. So I was curious right. as to whether they brought in Merle Haggard because there was going to then be the actual playing and singing and stuff. I think that's what it was. I think, um, so the actor who played Ron's dad um, in The Gift was Ken Swafford, very good actor, um, had done tons of television, very recognizable face, but I don't think he was a musician. I think uh, he just went as far as, you know, carrying a guitar case around in the episode. But I think it was because they wanted to have music in the show that they decided to to use Merle Haggard and certainly Merle Haggard is you know a pretty big draw yeah I don't think I got to do any scenes with him <laughs> so people ask me what it, my thoughts of him and I don't even know if I was on set when he ever worked because right uh, Merle struck me as, as being a very uh, shy humble man I, I got a tiny bit of a an Elvis vibe from him as well, because he he had his guys around, a couple of guys that he hung out with. I think they were probably a road manager or somebody like that. And and he liked to hang out on his bus. You know, he, he, they drove his bus on the lot and, and parked it. And that's that was his dressing room and where he hung out. But I got the feeling that he was, um, I, I, don't know, I think he hung out on his bus a lot. I mean, even, at home, but but he was um, very very nice, very very down to earth. Um, I tell you, it was it was a funny story. In that episode, again, the script said Jason plays Ironing Board Blues on the piano. And this was a dewdrop in scene where uh, where Merle Haggard comes in and, and ends up singing. Um, and I thought, oh gosh, I you know I wrote that tune on guitar and I've never played it on piano and i thought it would be it would be great you know if i could play like a honky tonk piano version of irony board blues the problem was i i came up with this version but i couldn't play it <laughs> I, I i i wrote a piano arrangement that i couldn't i could just just barely you know pull off Ah, and went into the recording studio at, at Warner Brothers thinking, okay, I can do this. I can do this, right? And so I'm sorry. Dun, 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 and I just make a little fluff. And, okay, start again. And you know what it's like in the studio. It's being in a recording studio is like singing or playing under a microscope. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, you can hear... <laughs> You know, every little fluff, every little breath, ev everything is just, you know, magnified and you hear it in the headphones and everyone else hears it in the control room. And, you know, there's Sandy Courage there and the engineer is there and Merle Haggard is sitting on the couch right behind me. Right. <laughs> I've got my back to him. I'm playing this upright piano. And anyway, fluffed it a few times. And behind me, I hear Merle say, it's all right, John. Take your time. You'll get it. I thought, well, that's sweet. That's very nice. You know, so I did it a couple more times and, and I did get it. 
and it was you know and it was all right but i, I you know it, it's funny because I, I i tried playing that the other day and i i still fluff it <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna get it what do you say i'm gonna keep working on it <laughs> well i i was watching um because i just covered a bit about the episode the wedding and so I was sort of looking through that the other day and the beginning of season five in some of those episodes and the wedding in particular, your hand, you had, I think, a broken hand or something oh. because there's points during during that episode. And I'm like, it must have happened during the episode because there's points where because we shoot out a sequence, it's like you've got a bandage on your hand and then you've got a cast on your hand. And then you got a bandage on, you know, like a little taped up thing. Then you've got a cast. So it, oh, gosh. Um, and you spent, um, I mean, knowing you and knowing your body language, I would catch that in, in episodes where I'm like, John doesn't normally stand like that. And I'm like, he's hiding his hand, but I would catch it here and there because I was looking for it. Right. I did break my hand and, um, and I, and I, and I went to work. And I said, you know, what, what, what are we going to do? And they said, okay, just, just hide it this week, and 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 we'll write it in next week. And I said, okay, good, great. It never happened. I was hiding it for six weeks. So you know, behind yeah. behind my back and like this and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I I. I squealed on you because I point out like, see, there you see the hand comes just a little bit above the music stand and you see you. We, um, and of course we can freeze it now. So <laughs> yeah, right. Oh God. I'm like, John wouldn't. And you, you'd have your hand behind somebody else that you were standing next to and you do things with your left hand. And I was like, but just again, we know each other. So it was yeah. the body language that caught uh, my attention first. And I went, that's, unusual why is he's there's some reason he's he's doing that and then i caught the a little bit of the bandage or something that's right <laughs> yeah we we dealt with all that stuff the other thing i noticed in the wedding was there was a really sweet scene between you and i um when mary ellen is in going through her personal confusion about uh, she's engaged to David Spencer, but now mm -hmm. she's becoming really attracted to Kurt and she doesn't know what to do with all of this. And you and I had a scene at Drusilla's Pond where we walked across that bridge and you were just giving me sort of a little bit of advice and, mm -hmm. you know, not to be too hard on myself. And it was a really sweet scene and it made me think how few scenes I remember having just Mary Ellen and Jason, that we didn't have a lot of one-on-one -on -one scenes together. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, you know, it could, <laughs> that that could have happened by default because maybe maybe that was an episode where Richard wasn't around anymore. Maybe maybe Ralph wasn't around. I don't know. So I think um, you know, I I got the opportunity the last year or two to to do some things where i seems i wouldn't have been asked to play you know in previous years so that was kind of nice but but you are right we didn't we didn't have uh many just one-on-one -on -one scenes that i can remember but um i'm, I'm gonna have to pull that one out because um yeah that, that sounds really nice yeah um, I, I I think I interacted more with the girls. You interacted more with the boys, and then we all interacted with with John Boy. You know, he gave all of us advice. Um, right. And and the parents. You know, I had certainly had stuff with Grandma. That's what I've become aware of as I've gone back through some of these episodes. Is how the family dynamics worked. I, I loved that. Um, it was a period in time where typically children on shows were accessories. They were sort of, the show was really all about the parents and, and the, and the kids didn't have much to do. And I think our show 
was one of the earlier ones that also that the kids had identities and storylines and uh and that was great i loved having those opportunities and everybody got them every season you had one or two episodes every season that were focused on your character yeah they, i think they, they did a really good job of sort of spreading it around you know and and when you you didn't uh have a big role you got a bunch of days off <laughs> True. No, I always thought, <laughs> okay, what's it going to be this week? A, a, a big part or days off? Oh, days off. Okay, great. <laughs> I'll write a song. Yeah. I, of course, still get asked a lot about another reunion and a lot of people saying, oh, I wish you know they'd do one more or whatever. Um, you know, I, of course, it's always wonderful for us to have that opportunity to get back together and be with each other and work with each other. But, you know, I, I don't personally think it's going to happen again. It's obviously not our call, which I think people may not realize that us saying we'd love to do that. We don't have any, any control over, over that. What are your thoughts on, on that whole idea of it and what it would be? I'm kind of a fan of things sort of, you know, running the course and ending on a high note. Um, you know, there a lot of us are are gone. You know, so it's not it's not possible to do that. Well, you don't have Ralph Wade or Will Gear or Ellen Corby. You know, and, and a lot of a lot of the supporting cast as well, Godsies and and so on. Um, so it, and. We're obviously not kids, so it, it wouldn't be the same. So, um, you know, if Richard were here, he'd probably make a joke about nobody wants to see how, you know, um, fat and bald and wrinkles we've gotten. <laughs> <laughs> he can um, he yeah. can say that because he hasn't. <laughs> he looks great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the bottom line is, yeah, I. For me, it's just always such a treat when we can be together for anything, you know, but I also yeah. want something, if something is going to be scripted as opposed to some of the things we've done where they've just gotten us together and we've talked and reminisced about the show, some of those specials that we've done. Uh, but the quality was so good on the show to do something mm -hmm. less than what that was is I think a disservice. Yes, you know, and and again, you know, getting back to Earl, you know, what would it be without Earl? Yeah, absolutely. You and, know, and life moves on. You know, so I mean, you have what's what's going on with you? What's you must still have things you want to do and things you are doing. I mean, post Walton's, you've your music career you know, has really taken front and center. Uh, I don't know how much people know about what you have done musically since the Waltons. If you want to bring people up to date a little bit. Well, basically, um, since the show, I've, I've just concentrated on music, which was where I started. That got me into um, the entertainment business in the first place. So um, I think of myself uh, more than anything as a guitarist. You know, that's where I started. And I, and I think really that's what I do best. And um, obviously the acting was another thing entirely. Well, not completely entirely, but was another thing. But as far as, you know, instruments, I think it's my, that instrument is my forte. And because of that, I've had a, an opportunity to to play, to record, to perform in all kinds of different situations in different countries, different venues, different, with different acts. You know, um, I've done a lot of studio work, um, all sorts of recording, a lot of uh, television sessions, actually, for different shows, and uh, a lot of touring. So it's been really kind of a, a mixed bag musically um you know when you play sessions 
you're called upon to play, you know, a number of different instruments, different styles of music. And I love doing that. But um, the music that I based my style of guitar playing on is primarily the blues. And the blues was the basis for just about all American music. It's in country, it's certainly the major component of, of jazz, um, rockabilly, rock and roll, um, even you know, R&B, even hip hop. Those elements, those rootsy elements that, that started in, with the early blues artists and records um, are still, still there. So that's that's my my great love musically. And when I moved from away from California, uh, first to uh, to New England, to Maine, and, and now back to England, uh, we live in Cornwall now. I decided that that's what I was going to pursue is is playing the music that I really love, which is blues music um, covers, but also original songs in that style. And a few years ago, I put out a, a CD called Going to Clarksdale, which was inspired by a trip that Marion and I made to the Delta, to the Mississippi Delta. Do you have sort of bucket list things still that, because, you know, we never stop as artists creating things and having projects, pet projects. Yes, just just more. I mean, the that CD going to Clarksdale, um, my um, idea for that album was that it should sound like a bunch of guys just jamming away in a house. Mm. You know, just be real loose and improvised and playing off each other. But the trick was that I played everything myself. Wow. So, you know, that's that's a good trick because a friend had said, uh, you know, it's just it's it's impossible if you if you overdub everything, it's impossible for it to sound, you know, really like a band. And and I thought, hmm, okay, that's a challenge. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna do it by kind of keeping it rough and like leaving a, leaving a few mistakes in, you know, not trying to make it too polished, just like guys that get together and they sit in the living room and they have a beer and they jam. So that was that was the uh, the motivation for that particular project. I think, you know, the next one will probably be a little bit more of a studio project and maybe just uh, a little bit simpler and a little bit more arranged, mm. perhaps. Um, maybe more originals on the next one. But mm. there's there's a lot of different things that that I would like to do, musically speaking. Well. One other thing I get asked about uh, with you and I is, you know, because of I have subsequent to the Waltons gotten much more involved in music and doing musical theater and stuff. That's and so people right. are like, well, why didn't, you know, why didn't Mary Ellen sing on the, on the show? And I was like, well, for one thing, I, I, I wasn't ready for prime time when I was doing the show. <laughs> you know, I was, I was the product of many, many years of voice lessons. <laughs> but I get I get asked about that, and then I get asked about why you and I don't, you know, collaborate on something. And you know, it, you know, it might be fun sometime if we could cook something up that would that you know to collaborate yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Yeah, uh, yeah. We've been listening to your um, Christmas album, which is great, and really enjoying it. Thank you. So I hope I hope everybody will pick that up. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. I... Yeah, you sound wonderful. Oh. And uh, yeah, I, you know, it's great because I I love the traditional Christmas albums and I love the old kind of big band stuff and the mm -hmm. standards and, you know, at Christmas time, we always listen to things like, you know, Louis Armstrong with Ella Fitzgerald and Frank Sinatra. And I mean, yours just fits right into that that bag it works, you know, you sound great and the arrangements are great and all the players are wonderful. You know, they're obviously really serious jazz guys, you know, cause they're like all their soloing is just beautiful. I mean, it's just really spot on mm. and they sound, sound completely authentic. 
So John, thank you so much for coming and joining me. It really has been such a joy to, to spend this time together and to wander around about life and career and, you know, all these, we've just known each other so long that there's still so many things that I love being able to learn about you. So thank you for sharing with me and consequently all of our fans. Thank you, Judy. It was just wonderful. It's always great to spend time with you and this was a treat. Yeah. Thank you for joining me for this next segment of my conversation with John Walmsley. I will see you next time on more behind the scenes of the Waltons. Thanks for watching.